Hey, greetings, people of the Most High God. Kenneth Hammonds here, Kenneth Hammond, the first. You know, just a few minutes I'd like to spend with you regarding the document that I've created. Uh, what I'd like to ask you is this. Are you living an existence or are you designing a life? Living an existence or designing a life? Man, that is so key. And it's upon me. So just for a few minutes, I want to mention to you a document that I have uh, here for you to take a look at this and to design this for yourself. Yes, indeed. Design it for yourself. Here it is. Creating your future by designing a productive, purposeful, and prosperous life. Oh, praise God. Creating your future. Designing. Ah, here's a statement from Mae Jemison, first African American female astronaut. Ah, she says, the future never just happened, it was created. We want to talk to you about that. This is a worksheet for a uh, spiritual discipline planning the future. Now, I want to talk about holistic view of living, of life, and designing. Just for a moment, I'm going to go to some scriptures that I think will be exciting for you. Health, wealth, health, and abundance in biblical views is a comprehensive of what we call holistic, for it includes the concepts of valuable, material resources, a prosperous well-being, a plenteous life, and financial prosperity. But it also advances past that. The concept of wealth includes spiritual, spiritual wealth. Spiritual wealth means that, what does it mean? A sound, healthy, prosperous inner soul and spirit, one that includes rich fellowship with the living God and generous service to others. This is true wealth, what I call godly wealth. Now, let me take a look at this. Oh, boy, you're going to love this. A new creation. You are a new creation designed. I want you to get that point. Designed afresh by the Spirit of God. John 3, 5. You know about being born of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ. And then Ephesians 2, 10. Let's take a look at some of those. Oh, these are going to be quite exciting for you. We're going to take a look at it in my favorite resource. Oh, yes, my favorite resource here. And that would be what? Do you know what it is? Yes, there it is. That is it. It is Bible Hub. Look, you put that in Bible Hub 517, and then what you do is you just hit enter, and there's 517. But we need to go to the Greek. Look, don't be scared. Don't be talking about, I'm scared of this. We're going to go to the interlinear Greek. Now, don't look at the Greek because that is scary. Don't worry about that. Let's just look a little bit at the Yankee. Therefore, if anyone, anyone, anyone that is in Christ, I know, I know, I know. King James says, any man, anyone is in Christ. He's a new creation. Let's take a look at creation. That's what I want you to see. Creation. Ah, this is a creation. You see that word, kesis? That's why I have that word in back of me. Kesis. Kesis. Yes, creation. Yes, often talking about founding a city, creating a city, but also in the biblical sense, it's always a divine work. You are a divine work of God. We're going to get to another scripture to show you that. But you are a creation. You are a creation. That is you. A new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. What a concept. But also, let's take a look at another scripture. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. We had enter on that. Ephesians 2.10. We go to the interlinear. Let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> ah, well, we are his workmanship. You know, workmanship, you heard a lot of people talk about it uh, in the Greek, in the Greek. <clears throat> Good. You're going to look at the Greek. Don't get scared. You're going to look at it and you're going to understand it. We'll look what we're going to look at, though. We're going to look at the English over here. The English letters, it's poema. <clears throat> poema. Poema. What we do is we hit the Strong's, Strong's number here. Take a look at this. Poema. It's a thing made. It's a work. It's a workmanship. Workmanship. It's a workmanship, of course, in this context, that which has been made by God. That's which is made by God. That's why some of the translations 
go really, really good with this. Look at some parallel translations. Ah, we are God's handiwork. We are God's masterpiece, a translation says. In other words, poema, that's where we get our Greek, that's where we get part of our English word, our English word poem. Poem, you've heard that. A lot of people spend a lot of time saying it doesn't mean poem and all that stuff. Let's take a look. We are looking at actually poem from a wiktionary. Take a look at it. Ancient Greek, what does it mean? It's a work or creation, but it's a poem also. You see, God has designed you and just thrown you together. Don't you know, before you were form formed in the womb, God had already thought about you. And then forming means designing you. You were designed for this work. You were designed for this time in which we live. Hallelujah. That is why you are a creation. And that makes you a very different kind of individual. Here we are looking again. This is a classical Greek resource. You're looking at it yourself. You're seeing in a classical Greek resource a poetical work or a poem used in Plato. So look, even back before the New Testament, we're talking about a poem, we're talking about something made by God, oh hallelujah. Psalm, Psalm 24, 22, verse four, look at this. For you made me glad by your deeds, for I sing joy at what your hands have done. I sing for joy because of what you have done. For you, I made me your work, at the works of your hands. That's that word poema in the uh, Greek form of this, what we call the Septuagint. It's the verb, it's the plural form, works of your hands. Here's what I want you to get. You have been created by God's hands, his handiwork. He has taken his hands and he has created you for this time, for your work that he has called you for. It is not just anything. It is a creation that he has made for you. That's what I want you to know. So get that key point, and then we'll be in good shape for you. Now, let's sneak back to our document. Look, God's design, that's you. But here's what you must do if you're going to create the future. You're gonna to have to have a purposeful striving that, it, that creates the future. Now, Paul talks some utterance here. You're gonna read this on your own. You're gonna be able to get a, a reference to this. You're gonna be able to get this reference. But the message translation says in 2 Corinthians 9, 11, wealthy in every way so that you can be generous in every way. That's what you are going to be. And that's what you can be as you eke out your own future. Wealth in every dimension of life. Now, you know this is from my book, God Wants You to Be Wealthy, How to Release the Wealth Builder Within. This is a thing I call every dimension of life. Look at the 10 dimensions of life, spiritual, intellectual, emotional, material, financial, physical, social, occupational, time, and even environmental. These are areas that God wants us to be wealthy in. You see, wealth is more than just money. It's way past money. It means to have more than enough. Don't you know you need to have a great physical wealth? We call physical wealth what? What? Health. Oh my, what a fantastic concept. Here you go. Here's some questions I want to ask you, and you can now fill these in for yourself. This is just a quick overview. I'm not look done with everything here. Let's engage in writing a design for your life for full wealth and balance in every dimension of life. I want you to honestly answer these questions. All right. Remember, strive purposely to create the future. All right. So when I use 12 months, that means I want you to kind of really aim on it. When I use the future, you have a little more maybe time, but you decide how this is. Spirit dimension, right relationship with God, humankind, and our earth. How successfully did you develop your spiritual life in the past 12 months? Ooh. How might you better design spiritual development to the max in the next 12 months? To the max. Intellectual dimension, that's your education and discovery. How successful were you in developing your mind, education, and discovery in the past 12 months? The past 12 months. How might you design increasing further discovery and educational growth in your life the next 12 months? Hey, this is purposeful. This is intention. Hey, Bob. Hey, look, emotional well. I call it sanity. Sound emotional well-being. How successful were you in managing your emotional health in the past 12 months? 
How might you design a better way of managing your emotional well-being in the future? You might think, well, I'm just an emotional person. That's just the way it goes. But I tell you, <clears throat> you need to really think about that. Maybe you can have more control than you think. Material. Some people really get messed up here. They are convinced that Christians should not have some kind of material well-being. Here's what I have to say. Material dimension, having the things you need to make your life safe and comfortable, safe environment. Oh, God wants us to have that. As you experience, as you experienced the past 12 months, did you have the kinds of things you needed to do what you wanted to do? to live the kind of life you wanted to live. Were you able to live the kind of life you knew you really needed to live? Now, how might you better design your life in the next 12 months to preserve, pursue the things you need to live the quality of life you desire? You may say, I'm stuck, I'm stuck here. There's no way, there's no way done for me to get out of this mess. Don't say that, don't settle. Be all that God has given you the power to be, hallelujah. Get out of it. Really pray about it. Think on it. There are all kinds of material ways. There's all kinds of ways to deal with that. There's all kinds of resources that you haven't even heard of to get you out of that mess that you're in. Financial dimension. I don't want to scare you. Financial dimension. Some of you say, well, I am limited to it. I, just, I make minimum wage. That's all. You know what? Minimum wage mentality means that you have no forward thinking. It's a great beginning. I'm not knocking that. But minimum wage, you know, I was on minimum wage years ago. Minimum wage was created for like the person in school, the person at the bottom. Do not settle. Always advance. There's a young man I know who got work for this place, uh, this store, and he came in just at the bottom. And now after four weeks, four or six weeks, he's now headed to a manager. How does that happen? Because you are diligent. You let people know. You do the right thing. You do it graciously. Anyway, here's the financial dimension. Having more than enough money for your financial independence, freedom, and stability. Woo! Financial independence, freedom, and stability. Here are the questions. Are you financially fit and able to purchase the kinds of things you need to live at the level of financial stability you desire? Are you maximizing your financial, ooh, maximizing. Are you maximizing your financial potentiality? Are you maximizing your financial potential? Are you? Are you giving the causes, giving to the causes and programs you wish to support? You really want to give to this and give to that. <laughs> the Lord has called you to that. Are you able to do that? Are you providing for your financial future and the future of your loved ones? I know this area hurts. I've been there. I've been worse shaped than you can ever imagine. You couldn't even imagine. Some of you have never been in a bad shape that I have been financially, but the Lord is able to pull you out if you pay attention and do things and connect with the right people and use the right attitude. Physical dimension, health and strength in the body. How successful were you utilizing the care of your body and physical well-being in the past 12 months? I don't care how tough it has been for you in the past 12 months, you can begin to come out of it if you pay attention to it. Again, not to get all personal, but man, it was a rough year last year. But I said, Lord, I know you can take me through. I began to do more and more. I began to do more with my exercise. I began to pay attention to what was going on. How might you design a better care of your body and physical health in the future? How are you going to do it? You got to be intentional. Don't just sit back and just let it happen. Social dimension, positive, wholesome relationship. It's loving and being loved. Are you loving and being loved? Some people say, well, nobody loves me. But are you also loving others? Ah, how successful were you at managing your social relationship and people skills, people skills in the past 12 months? How might you better design and enjoy your social life and further develop your people skills in the future? Your people skills will take you far. I was telling you about the person who began to advance on his job. It was the people skills that began to do so much. And that leads me to occupational. That is productive, wholesome activity is doing what you love. It's okay to do what you have to do to get some money, but it's even better when you do what you love. Some people said, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. You just enjoy your well-being. How successful are you in managing your professional 
Some people say, I don't have a profession. I don't have a career. Well, how about your work? Were you managing that or you're letting it manage you? In the past two years, have you just hummed, hold hum, just say, oh, well, this is the way it is. No, you got to think forward. Your God is an awesome God. He can work through you. You need to not settle. How might you better design your professional life and career in the future? How can you design it? Yes, design it, not let it just happen, but design it. Time to mention, ah, fulfilling your dreams and relationships by daily goal-directed action. Goal-directed, don't just be around. That's why that scripture says, redeeming the time. It means buying out every opportunity. Do not waste any time buying out every opportunity. How successful were you in managing your time? In the past 12 months. Uh oh, I even hit myself on that. Boy, hey, what am I doing? But I told you, you know, many of you have been following my easy, and you know that I'm on a re engineering. That's what the beard is all about. When I look in the mirror, I want to see a new Kenneth Hammonds. I've got a place to go, and I don't have time for fooling with anything that will take me off the path that God has given me. No, it's not just all work, it's enjoying God, it's enjoying families, enjoying the people of God, enjoying life. But Here's this, how might you design better use of your time, better use of your time, neither wasting nor misusing any precious moment. Time is precious, time is precious. Y'all know what I say, that time is so precious. Even if you knew how much time you had left, and let's say you figured you have 20 years left of life or 30, you calculate it out and you say, okay, but this is what I'll do because I got 30 years left. And that's valuable time. But what if you did not know when that time would be up? Oh, how valuable is that now? Huh? That, that's, that's really valuable. That time, that's why people talk about, oh, I have time to waste. No, no, no. We, none of us have time to waste. We have time to utilize, to love, and to laugh and to enjoy God's creation and God's people. Finally, environmental. Oh, my peaceful, healthy living surroundings. Ah, how wholesome and uplifting are your living surroundings in the past 12 months? You may think you can't get out. I kind of mentioned that a little bit before. You may think, oh, my, where I'm living, this, this is it. I'm stuck. Are you sure? How might you better design your relationship with your environment in the next 12 months? That's all I wanted to say. I just want you to think over this. You might say, well, that's a lot to think about. Well, life is a lot to think about. And now this is not counting the area of perhaps your ministry call. You have a calling as Paul had a calling. You have a calling because you're saved. It might not be some grandiose. Everybody wants to just do everything. But no, you have something that you're good at, that you're called at, that you have a natural proclivity for. Oh, man, you are something else. Yes, you are. Uh, make your election and calling sure. Be sure of your calling. Begin to check with God. Begin to see what people around you are able to see in the gift that you have. And then purposefully strive. Striving creates the future. Be on purpose. Be on purpose. Enjoy being on purpose. Man, this resource creating your future by designing a productive, purposeful, and prosperous life It'll be available, available to you. I'll put a, a way that you can get it down in the, uh, in the comments section of this YouTube. But look, this is something you don't want to forget about. Yes. Okay, so this is Kenneth Hammonds kind of signing out on these things. Uh, I just want you to know that God loves you more than you have ever imagined. Yes, he does. God is a good God. Look. I want you to create your future. I don't want you to sit back and say, oh, this is it. No, I want you to realize who you are in God. I have a little phrase, write it down. This is a Kenneth Evans quote of a quote. Refuse to be less than God has created you to be. Refuse to be less than God has created you to be. Ah, creation. That's what it's about. Ketesis, ketesis, excuse me, ketesis. You got to put that K and T together. It means creation. That's you. And that's what we want you to be, a great creator of God's future and what God has for you. 
and how you can bless. Somebody's waiting right now to be blessed by your poem. Somebody's right now waiting to be blessed by your song. Somebody's waiting to be blessed just by your good word. Yes, that is what life is all about. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Look, let me know how you felt about this. And also <clears throat> take a look at the resource and work through it. Work through it. And God will do a great work in you. So here we go. Kenneth Hammond's over and out. Enjoy God's blessings because God is going to give you more than you can ever imagine. God bless you. And I love you.